Sam Sneed, that's a real good friend of yours, right? Yeah, well, I, well, Dre introduced me to Sam Sneed. But, yeah, we stayed tight over the years. We stayed cool over the years. I just saw Sneed last year, you know. And, man, this nigga was putting together a epic album, bro. Like, I wish that shit would have came out when, at that time. Like, he would have bowled niggas over, man. I'm telling you. Like, he has so many talented dudes on that album. Like I said, Sharif. Uh, drama, now they, they, you might know him as Stocks McGuire, but back then he was drama. Like, he has some, he has some heavy hitters, dude. I was, I was not the sharpest tool in that shed, homie. I'm gonna keep it real with you, because my style was more simple. I mean, this is nigga Sharif and drama, they was on some Nas level shit. You know what I mean? Like, killing them. And then Sneed was handling the beats, and, you know, Sneed could write a little bit too, and... Oh, man, we was about to get them, dog. You know, but, you know, that's why I was so upset. Like, man, y'all y'all slowing the process, man. Let's, let it be about the music. I was always about the music, which was why I steered clear of most of the drama. You know what I mean? But, yeah, bro. So, yeah, me and Snee still cool. We still cool. Yeah, man. So, um, you know, I had a few people on my platform, man. I had um Kenya Ware. Yeah. Napoleon, 6-8. Yeah. You know, they all told me, from their point of view, the story between the incident that happened between Sam Sneed and Tupac. Right. But you, you being real close to Sam Sneed, you being real close to Dr. Dre. Yeah. Give me the story from your point of view. All right, cool. Uh, from my point of view, this it was only a couple weeks that only passed before this meeting, right? I had just gotten some shit at k and like a week or two before that, right? So Sneed calls me and say, hey, it's a meeting today. I said, you will be dumb to go to that motherfucker. You will be a dumb motherfucker to show up. He said, well, well Sneed, he a little brave nigga. You know, he piss, Pittsburgh, you, them, them niggas is tough. But he like, man, I ain't running. I'm like, I ain't running either, but I'm not walking into an ambush. You know what I mean? I'm like, bro. Don't go to that motherfucker. I told him like two or three times. Don't go. I said, if they ask where I'm at, I'm out of town. I'm not going back up in that motherfucker ever. You know what I mean? So uh, he went. You know what I mean? It turned out the whole meeting was about him. You know what I mean? And so I, I wasn't at the meeting. So I can't tell you the exact things that happened, but. What I heard was that him and Pac had started getting into it and then niggas started jumping into it. You know what I mean? But but the whole thing was, in my opinion, he took a ass whooping because they couldn't get the Dre. You know what I mean? And, you know, Sneed was still kind of trying to, because he was signed to death row just like I was. You know what I mean? So he's still trying to kind of navigate it between Suge and Dre, you know what I mean? And to me, it was some bullshit because I feel like uh, they start talking about all the East Coast niggas he had in the video or whatever, because Cool G Rap and Big Chuck and all them niggas was in the video, you know. And then they was trying to act like uh, he excluded everybody else. But the thing is, he invited everybody. You know what I mean? He invited everybody to be in the video. Niggas just ain't show up. You know what I mean? But he invited people to be in the video. You know, and uh, you know, it was niggas from the dog pound on the set, you know what I mean? So, you know, it ain't like they didn't know about the video and couldn't, you know, and he kept a secret or some shit like that, but that's how they twisted it, you know, because they was, you know, they was trying to give Pac a a, a, a a boss a boss a boss position or whatever, so Pac kind of initiated that. You know what I mean? He kind of instigated that, and it, and and it, ele it you know it uh escalated into whatever it it became. But he but Snee got a beating in that motherfucker. You know what I mean? But uh. But the thing about it is, he could have avoided that. And I tell Sneed to this day, bro, I told you not to go, man. 
And after the incident, you know, when they beat up Sam Snead, they made him go to um, Snoop a quitter party. That's what I heard. I heard that, uh, you know, he had to go up to. We hung out at Monty's anyway. That was the spot. It was in Westwood at the top of Westwood. So you could see all of Westwood and everything. And they had some good steak. I'm still cool with the owner of Monty's, Mike. You know, he still got one in the valley. But uh, he probably did. He probably did have. I seen him the next day, and he was, you know, he had a couple marks on him, and he was like, "Man, that was some bullshit." He was like, "Man, you know," I was like, "Bro, I told you not to go." You know what I mean? But Snead a brave little dude, man. And I ain't saying that. I ain't saying that he had to back down from them or nothing like that. I'm just saying it's an ambush, homie. You know what I mean? Like it's gonna be. It's an ambush. And I, could, I already knew the shit they was on because I had just gotten some shit a couple weeks before that. You know what I mean? And you think the motive behind that was simply because of Dr. Dre? Because if I'm not mistaken, Dr. Dre left the label at that time, right? Yeah, I think it's because Dr. Dre left the label. Sam Snead and us, our, our crew was the closest to Dre as far as we was the, we was the ones that worked the most with Dre. We was the only ones that wasn't gang related. You know what I mean? Everybody else was, was you know, either in Snoop Crew or in Suge Crew. You know what I mean? And we was the out of towners that Dre himself recruited. You know what I mean? So they considered us like Dre's pet project or whatever. So we can't get to Dre. We can get to his people that's still here, though. You know what I mean? So that's that's what I think it was. I think it was like a, a fuck you to Dre because he was still cool with all of us. Actually, he had called a meeting and he was taking all of us. You know what I mean? So he called a meeting. It was me, Sneed, Butter, Drama, Stocks and all them. So our whole little crew that was on Sam Sneed album, he was going to take us to Aftermath, right? So he's like, I'm starting a new label. I'm taking y'all with me, blah, blah, blah. We like, all right, cool. And then, uh, but me and Sneed is the only ones that had contracts with Death Row. You know what I mean? So I'm like, well, how are we going to get out of these contracts? You know what I mean? He's like, I'll take care of it. Don't worry about it. All right, cool. So I go over there and start writing. That's how I wrote uh, Been There, Done That. You know what I mean? Because, you know, I'm already at record one. I'm still on Death Row, but I'm already at record one writing. You know? And so... Uh, I think they did that because Snead hadn't chose sides yet. You know what I mean? And and he was like the most major figure they could get to to say fuck Dre. You know what I mean? And I heard after the incident where Sam Snead got ambushed and beat up or whatever, I heard he just disappeared. He moved to Atlanta after that. He did. Because I, at the same time, a lot of people don't know uh, Sam was dealing with brain cancer, man. He had a, a tumor in his head. And he beat that shit and came back from it. That's why I was like, this is one of the strongest little niggas I know. You know what I mean? He came back from brain cancer and all that, bro, and bounced back. You so know? he had brain cancer when the incident happened? I don't know if, oh, okay. if he had it then or... But shortly after he found out about it, you know what I mean? Terrible, and so he, he moved to Atlanta. You know, and uh, he's doing real good now, though. Shout out to him. And him and Dre reconnected and everything. So he doing his thing now. But, you know, I just wish he would have listened to me that day, man. But he had his reasons for going or whatever, you know, because he was trying to be up front with everybody. He he wasn't trying to do no shady shit with Dre or Suge. You know what I mean? So how did that affect your relationship with Tupac after Tupac did that to your man? Well, when I had this situation with the outlaws, at that point, I was like, fuck Tupac. Fuck the outlaws. Fuck all them niggas. You know what I mean? Like, uh, so my whole shit at that point was like, fuck them. You know, uh, I'm going to ride out here with Dre because I was, I was under the impression that Dre was going to take care of my contract. But he didn't do that. You know what I mean? He saved himself, you know. And at this point, I guess I can't blame him. He had to get out and make his own 
do his own thing. But then don't tell us that you're going to take care of it if you're not. You know what I mean? So it came to a point where I had to look out for me and said, well, damn, I'm still signing death row. You know what I mean? So I got to do what's best for me. And at that point, Suge wanted to talk to me. You know what I mean? So my manager was like, we need to go holler at Suge. He wanted, he wanted to talk to you. Well, Suge had already, he had always been straight up and down with me. He had never, he had never done no dirty shit to me. You know what I mean? So I wasn't like, fuck Suge. I was like, fuck Pac and the Outlaws. You know what I mean? So, uh, at that point is like the little aftermath uh, death row split. I don't know if y'all want to get into that or. Yeah, yeah, we definitely gonna get into that. Um, but um, out of curiosity, because you still cool with Sam Snead, um, how do Sam Snead feel about Tupac now? I don't know, man. It's funny because once he was killed, bro, it was like all beef was released, homie. You know what I mean? And I don't know, it's going to sound corny, but this nigga came to me in a dream, man. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, he was sitting, like, right here next to me, bro, and he was like, we cool. I'm like, we cool. You know what I mean? But, yeah, all the beef was, was deaded. Once he got killed, they had a big meeting at uh, Can Am, and Outlaws, everybody was there. Uh, uh, Yo-Yo, everybody, all the all the all the death row people and uh they played us the video they had just finished the video for i ain't mad at you mm. and it went down like it went it was it was some wild shit because if you man. remember that video it was eerie as shit because if you remember that video with bo keem and him and it kind of went down the same fucking way and they yeah, had shot this video though. before and I was like, oh, man, that shit was eerie. Like, it was just quiet after that for a long time. You know what I mean? And then, you know, Suge aired the shit out, bro. He was like, look, it's niggas in the room that got beef. Y'all can't be beefing with each other because this niggas trying to kill all y'all. You know what I mean? So I stood up like, yep, I got beef with these niggas right here. But I'm willing to squash it. You know, nobody deserved that. You know what I mean? And then they we start talking about it like, oh, we thought dude was Sharif. We didn't know you was flex or whatever. You jumped in. You jumped in the shit. I was like, I did. I did jump in it because y'all that was my homie. You know what I mean? And so we squashed all the beef. I'm cool with Edie them. I'm cool with Napoleon, all of them. You know what I mean? But at but before that, I was like, fuck them niggas, you know. But we did. We squashed the beef, man. Like men, we talked the shit out and you know, that was that. 